It's been an intense few days for residents in California, as record-breaking rains and extreme winds continue to pummel the region, which has been under siege for weeks now. It was like thunder, like And then the sound of uh, trees, I thought, snapping like twigs. And it was just this house, just completely disintegrating. According to local officials, hundreds of thousands have lost power. Devastating mudslides continue to cause chaos. And three men have died after being hit by falling trees. All of this, the result of a common and sometimes deadly phenomenon known as an atmospheric river. The atmospheric river. Atmospheric river. Atmospheric rivers. Okay, so imagine a river in the sky carrying up to 15 times the volume of the Mississippi River. And that's essentially what an atmospheric river is. Check out this animation by the University of California showing what it looks like from above. Essentially, a long trail of wispy clouds that can stretch for hundreds of kilometers. Atmospheric rivers generally begin in the warm waters of the Pacific, where water evaporates into the air. And when this humid air meets another air system, often a cyclone or a storm, the water vapor is concentrated and driven toward the coast, becoming a fire hose of rainfall and wind. And then, when it reaches the mountains, something called orographic lift happens. And that's when the mountains force the air upwards. And as it rises, it cools down, which can actually raise the humidity. And in the right condition, that collision squeezes even more rain, and sometimes snow from the system. You can literally see the orographic lift happening right here. I'm near San Marcos Pass in the San Inez Mountains. And look at that, big time easterlies of the atmospheric river. You can almost imagine it like these atmospheric rivers are big sponges for moisture. And as they come in over California, they basically get squeezed out. And so that's where we get so much rainfall, so much water associated with these systems. This particular kind of atmospheric river forms almost every year on the west coast of North America. It's sometimes referred to as a pineapple express because it originates near Hawaii. And often, it's necessary. California, you know, in the summertime, it's a pretty dry place. In the wintertime, it's a pretty wet place. We need that moisture from the wintertime, really, in order to sustain us through these dry summers. But this winter, it's been strengthened in part by El Nino, a warm climate pattern in the Pacific. And California has been hit by two of these atmospheric rivers in a row. It's the second so-called atmospheric river to churn its way across the state in a matter of days. It was actually basically two-ish storms all coming off of the same ex-tropical cyclone with kind of a smaller storm that hit Northern California and a much stronger storm that came straight in, straight off of the tropics and basically beelined right for uh, the central coast and then that carried down through Los Angeles and San Diego. The latest system pummeling California is rated on a level two to three on the atmospheric river's five-point scale. The scale considers both how much water the river is carrying and how long it lasts. And that's a big part of the danger with this particular atmospheric river, which has been lingering over the region for days. Look at this thing rip. This is normally a dry creek bed here off the mountains, but we are getting rainfall rates of an inch per hour out here, and the flooding threat is gonna continue. When this much rain falls this fast over this much time, it can do some serious damage. Governor Newsom has just declared a state of emergency for LA, Orange, Riverside, San Bernardino, San Diego, Santa Barbara, and Ventura counties. These systems have caused major issues across California. The San Francisco Bay Area clocked peak gusts of around 160 kilometers an hour, ripping countless trees out of the ground. In Napa, this old growth tree, like so many others in the area, no match for Sunday's heavy gusts. It was ferocious. I mean, um, the palm trees over there, Tom's yard, they were bent. You know, they're, they were going 40, past 45 degrees. Cat De La Grange, who had her home in Boulder Creek, literally cracked open last night by about seven huge redwoods, all coming down at the same time. What happened was the, um, the, the winds went in a circle, and it was like a hurricane. These downed trees didn't just damage houses and buildings. They knocked out power to hundreds of thousands of homes and businesses. The common theme here 
in Sacramento, elsewhere, power outages and the high winds. 900,000 people without power. According to the National Weather Service, over 11 centimeters of rain fell in downtown Los Angeles on Sunday alone, surpassing the previous record of just six centimeters in one day, set in 1927. The rain was so heavy and falling so fast, meteorologists upgraded the storm to what's known as a bomb cyclone. The bomb cyclone basically just refers to it being a storm that deepens very rapidly uh, and as a consequence can pick up in intensity. This causes basically um, much higher wind speeds, uh, which can then result in more evaporation and uh, basically more water vapor being pumped from over the ocean overland. And it just kept coming. Some streets filled with enough water to surf on. The widespread flooding took out retaining walls, damaged homes, closed roads, and even an interstate. In Tarzana, too much water to drive through, but some tried and stalled out. And all of that water also led to a whole other problem. Drivers warned to stay off the roads, not just for flooding, but mudslides. This road, partially covered with debris, led to six car crashes and multiple injuries. When it comes to mudslides, a series of upscale communities built on the slopes of the Hollywood Hills and Beverly Hills have been some of the hardest hit. Just to show you real quickly, even when it's only a foot and a half deep, it's quicksand. It's really hard to move, and you can see what it brings down. This is a nightmare. She was asleep in her bed when the hill started to slide at about 4 a.m. She didn't expect that to happen. People were forced to evacuate in parts of Los Angeles and Santa Barbara. Schools and businesses closed, and crews are still working to bring back power with no end in sight. The rain continues to cause flooding and mudslides in the south. Rain showers, strong winds, and thunderstorms are expected to continue across Southern California into Wednesday. The one thing that we can be confident about when it comes to California is that we can't be confident about the weather. Uh, every year is abnormal. Um, I don't remember the last time that we've had a year where somebody's been like, oh, this is just, you know, relatively average year for California. There is no average here. The abnormal is average. The abnormal is average. Help has been promised from President Biden if California asks for it. Things could get worse before they get better. Forecasts show that California is still in the midst of this storm, which means that the chaos will likely continue before the cleanup begins.